And this award goes to the Parks and Recs Department. Congratulations. Thanks, Mr. Williams. We put a lot of effort into our safety program this year with our monthly meetings and online trainings, and it's really paid off. Thank you. Great job, guys. Next, I'd like to present the Safety Manager of the Year Award to Bob Anderson, Water Plant Superintendent. You know, Bob and I had some differences when I first started with the city, but now he's one of the biggest supporters of our safety program. Bob and his department had the highest score on our annual safety audit, and they reported no preventable injuries over the last 12 months. Congratulations, Bob. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. They say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but you convinced me of the value of safety. Our guys do a great job, and I feel good at night when they're able to go home safe and sound. Thank you. Well done, Bob. Even though we're only presenting a few awards today, I believe that you all are winners. Our whole city has bought into our safety program from our city council, through our management team, to our employees that do their job safely every single day. Thank you all very much. Hi, I'm Frank Williams. I've been the city manager here for a little over three years. But one of the things I enjoy most about my job is to be able to recognize the outstanding work our employees have done in creating a safe workplace and reducing accidents. But it wasn't always this easy. When I first came to the city, the safety culture around here left something to be desired. For the most part, our staff was doing a good job of meeting deadlines, providing city services and keeping our citizens happy, but our accident rates were way too high and our insurance premiums were increasing each year. Those extra costs were affecting most departments in our city. We needed to make some changes. So I sat down with our risk manager and we decided we needed to adopt a new safety management system. Our goals for this system weren't that different from our existing accident prevention program. In fact, most public entities have similar safety program goals, which are to ensure the safety of all employees, citizens, and visitors, maintain a safe workplace, reduce the cost of risk in order to improve the financial stability of our organization, protect the reputation of our city, and improve the morale of our employees. In this video, we'll discuss some of the barriers that prevent you from effectively managing your safety program, offer tips on how to overcome these barriers, review the benefits of minimizing incidents and accidents, list the primary components of a safety management system, and outline how to put your safety management program into action. SIRSA presents Safety Management in Action, Establishing a Safety Management System. Now, sir, I appreciate you taking the time to come all the way down here, but I gotta be honest with you. The safety management talk is getting to be a bit much. We run a tight ship around here, so you don't need to worry about us. But Bob, these accident reports tell a much different story. I really think we need to review these numbers. This is Bob. Okay, I'll be right there. We have a water main breakdown on Maple, and just put the reports on my desk and I'll review them later. Bob was a perfect example of some of the barriers we faced in trying to manage our safety program. He had some attitude and control issues we needed to address before we could get him on board. But once he saw the value of the program, both financially and in efficiency, he's been a great proponent. Another barrier to a positive safety culture was our employees' perception of safety. We completed a survey of employees and managers and found that safety was often talked about, but was rarely put into action. And when accidents did occur, our management tended to be reactive rather than proactive. They were used to assigning blame and pointing fingers rather than managing potential hazards and preventing recurrences. An employee's perception of safety begins with the level of commitment demonstrated by upper management. We found in our survey that not everyone in our upper management was buying into our safety program. Hey Joe, will you be attending our safety meeting tomorrow? We'll be talking about- I am about not gonna have time to meet with a vendor. 
To address the barriers we discovered and solve the problems we were facing, we decided to implement a safety management system. A safety management system is an overlapping process of continuous improvement that helps all employees realize the benefits of working safely, minimizing accidents, and reducing claims. The benefits of adopting this system include fewer injuries and liability claims, cost savings on reduced insurance premiums, increased employee morale and pride in their work, improved services provided to citizens, and a safer community in which to live, work, and play. Implementing a safety management system is an important step to achieving these benefits. Many organizations have adopted the ANSI consensus standard called the Occupational Health and Safety Management System. This system is endorsed by safety professionals around the country and can be highly effective in reducing accidents. SURSA can provide resources to assist members in customizing a safety management system to meet their individual needs. There are four primary components that should be included in a safety management system. These include, one, management support and commitment, two, implementation and operation, three, accountability, and four, measurement and improvement. Let's take a look at each of these primary components in more detail. The first key component of a safety management system is management support and commitment. This commitment starts at the top, where City Council approves the safety budget. But just a few years ago in our city, that support wasn't always there. Let's continue going over this budget. Don't our police officers already have bulletproof vest? Why do they need new ones all the time? They're expensive. Councilman Barnes, this is not an unreasonable request. National standards call for replacement every five years. And in addition, the new vests are much lighter. They offer better protection for our officers. They're more comfortable. Well, these expenses just keep piling up and we need to cut the budget somewhere. Since then, we've been able to change this attitude towards safety, but poor safety attitudes may be found in other public entities. Some still look at safety as an expense rather than an investment. The importance of the financial component of safety cannot be underestimated. Money committed to our safety and loss control efforts really is an investment and must be directly tied to our organization's values and long-term goals. To be successful, this commitment and support must run through all levels of our organization, from the council, through city management, to all field supervisors and managers. Roles and responsibilities need to be delegated across all levels of management, not just to our risk manager and safety committee. As part of our safety management system, we have strategic conversations with all of our upper management to explain the importance of supporting our safety policies and participating in our safety program. Participation includes visits to job sites, touring facilities, and attending safety meetings. This involvement clearly demonstrates safety management in action. How's the new trench box working for you? Oh, great, Mr. Williams. Um, thanks a lot for getting this approved. It's going to make our trenching projects much easier and faster. And much safer, too. I'm well, glad to help, guys. Our insurance premiums are just now starting to come down after that trench collapse three years ago. We don't want any more accidents. Keep up the good work. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Employees take our safety programs more seriously when upper management makes it a top priority. Convincing management at all levels to buy into the organizational value of our safety management system was crucial to establishing and managing an effective system. The second component of a successful safety management system is the implementation of your safety program as it relates to your facilities and operations. Most public entities have a number of safety programs, policies, and procedures already in place. It's important to keep all your safety materials up to date and within industry standards. Your goal should be to meet or exceed best risk management practices. SURSA can provide a wealth of resources, including sample policies and training. One of these best practices is providing ongoing training, beginning with the council and management team. Short safety presentations are conducted, written materials distributed, and online resources made available. Employee safety training should begin during the new hire orientation prior to the new employee working in the field. 
From day one, management must take the time to emphasize our city's commitment to safety. Ongoing safety training programs should include classroom sessions, online programs, and hands-on reviews in the field. Continual follow-up must be provided to ensure strict adherence to all policies and procedures. Other materials we use successfully are Job Safety Analysis Forums, or JSAs, where employees are allowed input into the safe completion of their work. In fact, we had a situation just the other day where a JSA was helpful. Hey, why are you guys working so slow? It shouldn't take this long to clean out a sewer. I'm very sorry for the inconvenience, ma'am. Uh, we should be done shortly. There's more people standing around than working. Can't you just jump in the hole and get it done? We can't do that, ma'am. We follow strict safety procedures, and I have an obligation to the city and to my crew uh, to get us home safely tonight. Yeah, whatever. Many public employees have to work under tight deadlines, listen to complaints from citizens, or deal with political pressures. That's why it's important they know and understand your safety policies and feel supported by management. This empowers your employees to work safely and not take shortcuts. Some people don't realize that working safely can also increase efficiency and productivity. By minimizing accidents and reducing injuries, the time and cost savings, both short-term and long-term, can be significant. Another important aspect in the integration of our safety management system is interdepartmental communication and cooperation. This involves different departments working together to ensure the safety of city employees and the general public. For instance, whenever we have a major water line break, the Public Works Department responds immediately to repair the leak. The police department is called in to help with traffic control, and the fire department is put on standby to assist in a possible rescue if the job requires work in an excavation or confined space. Once a year, our public works, police, and fire departments conduct mock rescue drills to prepare for different situations. These drills allow the departments to test communication channels, check response times, and practice rescue scenarios. The third component of a safety management system is accountability. Accountability begins with establishing performance expectations for all levels. If your employees are told to follow your safety programs, yet never held accountable for their unsafe work habits, they'll develop an apathetic attitude towards safety. Only after you've established safety as a core value within your organization can you begin to hold everyone accountable. Accountability must be applied to every level of your organization. Managers and supervisors must hold each other to a high safety standard. An evaluation process for upper management should be established. Management must consistently enforce safety policies and procedures with their staff. Appropriate disciplinary action should be taken when needed. Safety should be an important component on every employee's performance review. Employees should feel empowered to ask for additional safety training or request specific personal protective equipment. They should also be encouraged to offer suggestions and ideas on how to make their jobs safer. And workers should be accountable to their co-workers to maintain safe working environments. Hey, let me give you a hand at that. I wouldn't want you to hurt your back. Thanks. Grab the other side. Throughout your organization, everyone must take personal responsibility for safety. Accountability should include rewards for safe performance. Conducting safety competitions and hosting an annual safety award ceremony are positive ways to encourage safety performance and reward employees and management for meeting their safety goals. This can also create healthy competition among departments. You may encounter negative attitudes towards safety and at-risk behaviors that must be changed. But by redefining performance expectations and holding managers, supervisors, and employees accountable for safety, you can establish an effective and positive safety culture. The final component of a safety management system is measurement and improvement. You can measure the results of your safety program in many ways. You can easily track the reduction of accidents and incidents, which will eventually reduce insurance claims and potential lawsuits. Actual results can be measured against your pre-established goals, help you make improvements and changes to your safety programs.
It looks like our insurance premiums actually went down. What's up with that? Since we implemented our safety management system a few years ago, we've been able to minimize accidents and reduce claims. The reduction in our premiums is directly tied to the success of our safety efforts. I never realized that a safety program could have such a positive impact on our finances. Yeah, I know. Other improvements can be measured in the attitude of your employees through participating in drills, attending safety meetings, and demonstrating safe work habits. Participation of upper management in safety activities can also be measured. Once you've compiled measurable results, you can correlate the investment in your safety program directly to increased efficiency, reduction in claims, and other direct cost savings. This gives you a valuable tool to analyze your return on investment and how it affects future budgeting. After you establish your safety management system, you'll need to continually update and adjust details of the program. Over time, personnel will change, different hazards will arise, and new laws and safety regulations will be enacted. All these elements must be analyzed and adjustments made to your safety management system. Even with these periodic adjustments, accidents may still occur. Thorough accident investigations are necessary to determine the root causes of each incident. Only after a detailed investigation of the accident can you determine changes to policies and procedures, disciplinary actions, or other hazard control measures. There are six common hazard control measures. We'll discuss these in the order of their effectiveness. The first is to eliminate or reduce the hazard. This can be accomplished during the engineering, design, or retrofit phase. Mechanical equipment can eliminate manual material handling, or safety systems can be installed, such as a fall prevention system. The second hazard control measure is to reduce risk through substitution. This may involve substituting less dangerous solvents or chemicals. It may also include using slower equipment speeds on tools or lowering the pressure on systems. The third method is to incorporate engineering controls. These may include installing interlocks, ventilation systems, sound enclosures, or machine guarding. Providing warnings is another good corrective measure you can take to minimize risk. These include placing warning signs, properly labeling chemical containers, and installing backup alarms, horns, or flashing lights. The fifth hazard control measure involves administrative controls, such as conducting employee training, using job safety analysis forms, establishing shift rotations, and alternating work procedures. The final hazard control measure is the use of personal protective equipment. Hard hats, goggles, gloves, vests, hearing protection, and respirators should all be provided as needed. These are the six most common hazard control measures. Keep in mind that many situations may require two or more of these measures to be used together. A crucial part of your safety management system is to provide feedback to employees and management on their progress towards meeting their safety goals, evaluating their current situation, and then setting future goals. This open communication will build trust in your safety management system. Okay, does anybody have any questions? If not, that's gonna wrap up our safety meeting today. I wanna to thank our special guest, Councilman Barnes, for sitting in. Councilman, can you come up here, please? Thank you, Sergeant. I learned a great deal today about the dangers you and your team face every shift. I have a new perspective on the value of our safety program, and I hope you like those new vests. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate it. I'm proud of the progress our city's made in the last few years, especially Councilman Barnes. Since implementing our safety management system, we've made good progress in reducing accidents, minimizing claims, and lowering our insurance rates. The improvement in our safety culture is good news for our city, our employees, and our citizens. Let's review what we've discussed in this video. There are many barriers in place that prevent the implementation and effective management of your safety program. These must be identified, evaluated, and then corrected. Your employee's perception of safety starts at the top. 
To have any chance of success, upper management must commit to and financially support your safety program. Every public entity should adopt a safety management system that includes four primary components. One, management support and commitment. Two, implementation and operation. Three, accountability. And four, measurement and improvement. Since we implemented our safety management system, our city has begun to realize many benefits, including fewer injuries and liability claims, cost savings on reduced insurance premiums, increased employee morale and pride, improved services provided to our citizens, and a safer and nicer community in which to live. I hope this video has helped you understand the importance and value of implementing and maintaining a safety management system. This system will help your public entity put safety management in action.